This little verse here, and today I'm going to be reviewing Hide and Seeker by Dr. Herman. I received an advanced reader's copy through NetGalley in exchange for a fair and honest review. Thank you to the publisher. All opinions are my own. This is a middle grade horror about a group of friends. There's Justin, Z, Nia, and Lyric. Z disappeared about a year ago and it really splintered the friend group. Justin's mother died around the same time, and he's just been really going through it. And Z has randomly showed back up, and he has a lot of scars on his arm. He's acting a lot different than how they remember him. All his friends are basically wondering what's up, and it's revealed that what's up is that Z was abducted by a mysterious malevolent force called the Seeker, Basically, the Seeker's path to abducting children is through the game of hide and seek. And basically, Z's friends all find out that they are going to be sucked into the Seeker's shadow realm next. And it's about them trying to figure out how they're going to help their friend and figure out how they themselves are going to stay out of the shadow realm. So from the first page, we open up and it was so good. I was just strapped in, ready to go. I was just ready for like the terror roller coaster to start running. Like, the first page, it's, like, Z's welcome home party, and it's, like, the mood's already being set. He has the balloons by the mailbox, but they're kind of droopy. It's kind of, you know, that wonky, off-kilter, not-quite-festive feel. There's crows flying around. There's, like, an ice cream truck driving by, and, like, the, the little speaker or whatever that plays the little ice cream truck jingles kind of broken, and it's all distorted. And it was just great. I felt like the atmospheric parts of the story were so good and so creepy, and I was just into it. Uh, in terms of the characters, we don't get to know Z very well. Justin's the main protagonist, and I thought that he was relatable. Nia is one of his friends. She is kind of the trivia whiz. She talks really fast. Her and Lyric are kind of the comic relief. Lyrics, the other friend, um, I felt like he was just kind of goofy. Like, he really likes playing instruments, but he's really bad at everything that he picks. He sort of helps Justin come up with plans. And I felt like the series did a really good job of balancing the creepier moments with, like, more fun, like, humorous moments. I had a few questions about the life in the real world. I'm not the target audience, but I... I kind of had some questions about how lyrics spoke because like some of the things he was saying were like sayings when like I was like make, maybe not when I was 12 but like when I was in high school there definitely kids saying it and so I was just kind of wondering like if you're you know 12 now how that's gonna really stack up I don't know if kids are still saying that anymore <laughs> Um, it's kind of funny to be saying that, but yeah, I don't know what the kids are up to these days. When it's actually laid out, like, how the Seeker did it and why they did it, it honestly did feel a bit silly, but like I said, the whole thing was so atmospheric and creepy that, like, I don't think I really dwelled on it too much. And in terms of, like, the creepiness factor, I thought it was creepier in the real world than in the Shadow Realm. Like, in the Shadow Realm, it is just very different from reality and there are certain rules that definitely make it scary and unsettling. It was like kind of creepy to read about them navigating it and how it's affecting the kids who had been there for like years. But the Shadow Realm also works by like manifesting the fears of each of the children in the Shadow Realm. And I just kind of noticed as I was going through that like a lot of the kids don't necessarily fear like physical things. Some of them have like more like existential fears. It is kind of a mix. Um, I just thought it was going to be like very focused on like the monsters and sort of the fears like you know the clowns and like the needles and like you know the dark. I thought some people's fears were scarier to read about than others. But even so, I thought Dr. Herman had a very good sense of detail. Even when they're in the shadow realm like there would be fears that like 
there was one in particular that I heard it and I was like, that sounds more like ridiculous than scary. And then just how she brought in the details of like how the fear actually worked, I thought really made it unsettling and really made it scary and creepy. And how even when the kids get small wins, how like even realizing that they have a win, that that's also creepy things happening. In terms of the intensity of the horror, I would say that if you or a young person who's interested in it could handle Coraline, then I think you could definitely handle this book. I feel like Coraline was like more intense than this. I, I like the ending. It ends on a chilling note. It felt like kind of a classic horror movie send up where you kind of leave it a little open. And I would be interested to see if Dr. Herman writes more books in this sort of universe because I felt like she did leave it open for her to tell other stories. So this story was just a lot of fun. There's camaraderie between the friends, there's a bully character, there's mystery, there's a monster that has to be defeated. It was just a very welcome read. I was very stressed at the time I was reading it. I felt like I had a lot going on. It was just nice to sink into this creepy story and then just enjoy it. Pretty much any critiques that I gave were like nitpicks. It really didn't take away from my enjoyment of the story at all. So I would highly recommend this story. I really, really enjoyed it. It's out September 15th. Do you think that you'll be reading it? Do you have a younger person in your life who you think would enjoy this story? Like, what's your experience with middle grade horrors like? If you like the video, please hit the like button. If you haven't subscribed already and you'd like to stay up to date with me and my bookish activities, please do so. Thank you. Have a good one. Goodbye.